Como Mai, come, come and listen to our story for today. It'll be one that you'll keep in your mind and you'll keep in your heart and you will share all your life. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful and courageous young woman who loved to trek into the upland forests of her island home. She was Queen Emma, Kaleleo Nalani, of the Kingdom of Hawaii. On one such journey in 1871, her company sang, danced, told stories, and wrote poetry of their experiences in the magical upland forests of the oldest island, Kauai. It is with the inspired mana of the performers who honor the memory of Emma Lani that our story is possible to tell. Our story is based on her life and journey as seen through the eyes of the performers, dancers, and scholars who honor her memory annually at the AOA Emalani i Alaka'i Festival hosted every year in Koke'e State Park by Huyolaka, Koke'e Natural History Museum. As a teller of tales myself, I know very well that something special happens when we look into the past. We see through our imagination how people felt about Queen Emma and how she met the challenges of her life. Long live Kaleleo Nalani, Traveler of the Mountains. Our chants are so valuable because we know all these stories because of chants, mm -hmm. because of letters, but a lot of them have told us the inside scoop on the trail, how she went, when she went, what happened. It was through the chants. By doing all of the dances that we do, we are able to bring our Ali back to life again. The poetry of the Hawaiian people, you can just read it, and it is like you're sitting in the forest with her. with this ancient way of life and ancient wisdom and we need that in this modern times. Oh, that chant is so beautiful. You know, that's a, a, a birth chant for Emelani. And um, we learned it in Palau. We've chanted it up here many times for Emma at the festival. We have loved it and done it, and it's just so meaningful to me because it, it speaks of her birthday, which was this La Ilua o Yanuwali, the 2nd of January. And then it talks about all the auspicious signs of the heavens and the rumbling of the earth. The lands were rumbling, the heavens were rumbling, and there was lightning flashing. All the signs that would tell of a great um, Ali'i being born. So she's courageous, she's adventurous, and she's the queen. She gets to be the queen of Hawaii. It's back in the days of the monarchy. So here she is, a young Hawaiian woman. She was Hapa as well. True? Yes, she was um, Hanai. Oh. By her uh, adoptive parents were Hapa. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, her father, Dr. Rook, raised her in a medical and educated environment as well. Mm -hmm. Her mother being of the um, royalty. 
Did she go to royal school there, where all she the other children went? Yes, of course. She went to the, she went to the chief school. Uh -huh. But she had, I think, an exposure with her Hanai father, Dr. Rook, gave her a little bit of extra insight into the needs of people because he was the court physician. Right. They had a dispensary in their home. Right. So she saw the Hawaiian people and people come and go. Right. Her father was a doctor and she went on uh, the rounds with him, his rounds, and she saw many, many people suffering and many, many people dying. So she knew it was important to establish uh, at least three different avenues to, to help them, to bring health to them, to bring health to the spirit. She must have been a lovely person. And because she was educated in the Chi School, she saw the need for our Hawaiian women to be educated, but not for themselves, not to be who she was, an mm -hmm. educated Hawaiian woman making changes who was very powerful. She recognized the need for our Hawaiian women to be educated so that they could support their Hawaiian men which is what she did with her husband. You know, the That's help, right. To support their Hawaiian men. Welcome to St. Andrew's Priory School, an Episcopal school for girls founded by Queen Emma in 1867. I'm the director of admissions, and I've been a, with the Priory for 22 years this time, not counting when I was a student here at the Priory. I like to tell people about the vision of Queen Emma, where she, how she wanted so much for girls to have a quality education, as did the royal children and as did all the boys in Hawaii. And so she and her husband had been to England several times and became Anglicans and brought the Anglican Church to Hawaii as well as brought um, sisters to start our school. She had a dream, she had a vision for the girls of Hawaii as well as for the people of Hawaii to have um, the health care that they have, the school, the education. We are 135, we will celebrate our 136th year this year in May, and um, we have about 500 girls kindergarten through grade 12. Aloha and welcome, and on behalf of the Daughters of Hawaii, I welcome you all here to Hanai Akamalama, or Queen Emma's Summer Palace. Imagine this home coming all the way from Boston in 1848. It was termed a knockdown home. They would build it up, knock it down in sections, number it, years later to be known as a prefab home. Now the owner who builds the home, two years later, he had to have it uh, auctioned off and that is where Queen Emma's uncle buys it at auction for $6,000, situated on 65 acres. Just imagine, this was truly a wonderful place to just rest and relax and that's all the Raw family used this home as. Ayo means to answer. So Ayo Emalani and you're saying Emalani answer. And what is she going to answer? Ialaka'i, to lead. So we need her. In other words, we need the leadership from Queen Emma, whatever the leadership is. We sat down and talked about it, Marsha and I, and then any time an idea takes fruit, a board has to approve it, and then it can fly. And the support came for the first Eo e Amalani i Alakai came from those halau who supported me at Kiahu Alaka for the Ho'ola'a. You know, this festival is wonderful and beautiful every year. We love to come to it because it has two elements that really make it for the hula. It's not competitive and it's outdoors. And that's where the hula was meant to be done, under the sky, you know, breathing the air. And so that part is so lovely. And then not to be competing with other halal, but to be just enjoying them. It's not a competition, but it's just a sharing, and, and it's so nice to come here. You're going to see Ohana and family getting along. There's halals that, you know, get along. Normally in a hula competition, everybody's out, dog eat dog. But this particular event, you know, it's outdoors. It's in a beautiful open meadow here in Koke. We can't ask for anything more. Even though it seems kind of overcast, these are our kupunas coming to us and joining us. So when we Hawaiians see rain and clouds and all of that, we know that that's our ancestors coming to be part of the festivities and, and to join in the aloha that we have. This is a critical time for the Hawaiian population, for the people and their health, right? That's right. She saw a lot of the suffering, you know, where uh, some of our royalty maybe wouldn't have that 
that um, exposure. Right. She saw the suffering of the Hawaiian people, um, uh, the early deaths, the orphans that were left behind. Right. And I'm sure and I'm certain, and, and she had the opportunity because he was educated in some of the finest schools in England, Is even right? considered today, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Rook. Right. And um, as a young man, he impressed the royalty so much that they snatched him up, you know, <laughs> as the royal physician. Oh, sure. Queen Emma is somebody that um, I, she's just like one of my heroes, you know, for, personally for her commitment to the Hawaiian people and for all, the, just the, the aloha she had and her humanitarian efforts while she was alive. And she had such a tragic young, you know, childhood in her 20s, losing her family and all that. But I think it made her that much more devoted to, w with compassion to others. Yeah. To want them to yeah. be well and happy and she was one of a kind. Yeah. It's through the poetry we come to know her and we know her as beautiful, we know her as intelligent, we know her as uh, a guide. But one of the things that so strikes me today, the reason it's important in a very Hawaiian way to find your path forward by looking backwards is we need to look for role models, for leadership, and for guidance today. And I think in so many ways, Emma Lani, Kaleleo Nalani, is such a leader for her people. Kind of amazing, because kind of what we were talking about yesterday, how in that time, a time that's gone already, gone away, you know, there was no need to prove you were Hawaiian or, mm -hmm. or have to be a certain way to be Hawaiian, because you were Hawaiian, mm -hmm. it didn't matter. Through and, and through. Through and through in your thinking, in your processing, in your communication, in your connecting with people, you were fully Hawaiian. You didn't have to do anything to make it feel like you were or weren't, mm -hmm. and there was no pointing of fingers if you were or weren't. It was this, this, this really, and, and, and so when we were talking about Queen Emma, and, you know, how she was sort of, you know, um, straddling two worlds, you know, one sort of the English-speaking American-influenced world, and then this full-on, being this full Hawaiian um, mm -hmm. person who um, lived and breathed being Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of amazing thinking back at, to a time that it was like that. It makes me feel that she was a person who knew both worlds. And, exactly. and, and like people can do today, mm -hmm. people that you know, are strong Christian in their, strongly Christian in their faith or mm -hmm. strongly Hawaiian in their cultural background, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. You know what I'm saying? They can find a way to make that work together like she did. Mahalo. Yeah. That's, ex that's yeah. so true. I think that's what we need to learn today. Mm. That there is never one way. There's never one way. She, she was a powerful woman and she shows us that it's true. And she set an example for us that you have to be balanced. She was balanced. She was in the city, very savvy and a power to be reckoned with mm -hmm. in the capital. In the mountains, she was also very savvy and a power to be reckoned with. She was aware of the needs of her people. And I'm not talking about Hawaiian people, just Hawaii. Mm -hmm. she, she recognized the needs of her people, and then she was, uh, she satisfied them. She continued to inspire their confidence, and it was through her guidance through her careful decision making and through her willingness to take the challenges that laid ahead of her. And I think that's something for us today to look at. It's worthy for us to get involved by learning more. And, and they had a rich life, although it was so young. She was so young when she made this trek at 33 years old, mm, yet she mm -hmm. had done so much already as a young woman. She lost her husband, she lo well, she lost her son, her four-year-old son, children she loved. Then she loses her husband, and still she goes on to, you know, finish up the dream of the, the um, Queen's Hospital, mm -hmm. That's creating right. that, uh, making that into a reality. So they were the founders of Queen's Hospital, the biggest, yes. you know, mm -hmm. uh, of the time uh, in the whole Pacific, the best medical facility there was. She saw the need, and the thing that I really respect about this particular family of monarchs is sh they were... A, a, they were so obviously aware of the um, tragedy that took place with the influx of immigrants and the sailing industry and the whaling industry and the diseases that just plagued the Hawaiian people and their sensitive immune systems. They were dying off mm -hmm. and there was no medical help for them.
There was no medical attention. There was no facility to help them. And uh, I, I really respect this particular couple because they went a step further. They really did a, a tremendous service mm -hmm. to the Hawaiian people. The Lawai'i wa Makana, Makana is our beautiful mountain there in the north by Ke'e and Ha'ina. And that Lawai'i is famous. And you hear about it in chants and songs. Lawai'i wa Makana is just kind of like our, um, you know, Mukihana and Maile Lauli Ili'i of Kauai were famous for that. But we're also known for the Lawai'i wa Makana. So I'm making this lay as Ho'okupu because my dear friend Manulele is going to portray Emilani this year and I've known Manulele for years and love her very much and just look forward to you know all the joy that she will experience and I know already because I've talked to her about it and she's very excited and so I wanted to have a beautiful ho'okupu which is like an offering a gift of offering for her and I spoke to our kumu and she's bringing me ilima and so we will have the ilima and the lawa'e to offer to our beautiful Queenie today. I dance with Papa Lawaeo Makana, also known as Pua Ali'i Ilima. Our kumuhula is Victoria Holt Takamine, and she comes from Oahu. We are fortunate enough for her to come over here once a month to share her mana'o with us and her hula. For me, it's very special to be up here with my hula sisters and to be out here in Koke'e with the nature um, because I grew up on the mainland so coming home here has been really special for me. Um, my grandmother, Auntie Angeline, is also in our hula halau so to have her dancing behind me and singing, you know, to hear her singing in my ear is a great comfort and joy for me. So I'm very much enjoying being home and having hula connect me to my roots that I've been longing for and, and missed um, growing up on the mainland. So I'm very fortunate and appreciative of all the time and energy that gets put into hula. So preparing to dance, we all made our lays, as you can see, with the loa'e, which is our name, Papa Loa'e o Makana. And... Um, our costumes on Kauai are actually printed, and they have Lawai ferns on them. And the most exciting part for me is that you, mm -hmm. Manolele, are playing Queen Emma, not Ea, Mark, tomorrow. Aye. And so you have come on this journey along with knowing the story and bringing your family here to the mountains. And so you have feelings mm -hmm. about being honored and and asked to play the queen. Oh, how does that felt for you? Um, moving would be a light way of putting it. Moving. It has moved me mm. in, in many ways, on many levels, uh, sure. to appreciate the opportunity to be able to sit in her place. Well, dancing for the queen is a great honor, and it has a lot to do with the old times. It makes you remember the past. I'm really excited to dance. This is my second Queen Emma. This is my second year of dancing hula. And Auntie Manulale Clark is representing the Queen. And she's very close to our Ohana. So it's going to be really special for me dancing for the Queen, as is for everyone else. But to have her out there representing our Queen Emma is going to be even more special for me because I have a great connection with her. So um, when we were getting ready for this, I was trying to think, you know, what numbers you folks could do because we think, well, it's Kauai and it's Queen Emma and it has to be related to that somehow. So I was trying to think, what do they know that we could do? And the f first thing I was thinking of actually was um, um, our Nohili chant, which you know and love. One of the reasons why I wanted you folks who work so hard to get ready and I wanted to do it with you because since my mom was here I can turn into the dancer again since I have my kumu with me but um, was because of the history of that that dance that routine and how it's been passed on to the family and that sweetheart grandma was someone that I revered like Queen Emma 
And so I thought, oh, that would be an appropriate thing to do. That routine is one that she taught my mom when she was a kid, and, and now we're just still carrying it on that same routine that was mm -hmm. always done in the family. So how was it for you to... I know it's, it was hard. To it was a, it's a very hard number to dance, first of all, because it's noho, and there's a lot of um, stretching and... Um, all those sorts of things, and just remembering the number of period is hard for me. <laughs> Chanting it ourselves. Chanting it ourselves, but to be dancing a, um, a Kauai number for a place name here in Kauai was just a great experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I love doing ili ili numbers anyway, because you just have this powerful sound with the rocks, and you just... It's great. Um, it's yeah. a nice feeling, especially doing with the three of us, the way we did it at the festival was just yeah. even more special. Hula is not just entertainment, but it's a whole lifestyle of education and being in balance. So I'm very appreciative of them doing this festival because for me it's one of the high points of hula to come up here and dance. And for our halau too, it's wonderful because they come from Oahu, they can experience Kauai, Koke'e, you know, we go on the hike, we do other things, they see the beauty of this island. And for our own people, I mean, you know us, here on Kauai, we're so busy doing our life, trying to earn our living and make everything and do our community meetings and all the things you got to do to make everything happen. That to cut out a time to be able to be out in nature, that for me is also just so awesome to be able to do that and so wonderful and to be with each other in this circumstance of not the rushed pace of life, but, oh, we're dancing hula, you know, we're making lay, we're, having, we're making our music, we're together, it's, it's very wonderful. The ulili was really great because it's the, you know, the, using the, the rattle in that way that a lot of people have never seen before. I heard a lot of comments later, it's like, oh, what was that you were using as your implement? Because we never saw that one before. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice to do numbers that, that are not as well known, using implements that not, are not as well known to the general public that knows something about hula. So. Yeah, and we've sort of made that a little mission of ours to really bring out the rare implements like the ulili. And... Uh, to share them in public when we can, to raise people's awareness of them and maybe they'll be encouraged to use them too. <laughs>
So my mom did the ki'i, which is always so fun and wonderful to watch. And, and you folks did the standing and moving Standing version. and moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a, that was a nice number to do just because um, it starts out with Auntie Nona, um, mm -hmm. with the ki'i. And that already brings the spirit of the whole um, hula. It just brings it sets to the, the audience tone. and sets the tone and the whole ambiance is already ready for us to yeah. dance. So there's no better way to, to dance than to have that kind of beginning. We used to make the kini of small baby coconuts, make the little puke at the back of the fingers, and then dress in a, in a nice little costume. And the telling of the story, supposedly by the kini. And let me get my hands in here, and so I can wave her arms to you. Can I wave her arms to you? <laughs> She's a little travel worn. Oh, I forgot to comb her hair. Oh, when we. Kehala punai kamaka. Two, two, a cool, 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 a cool
Haluka maka oka oha mai auli. Nini yau ehaka waki koe e. Eki anu kane hele oiga. E ala e ala e. No no. It was pretty amazing just being out there. Um, and we've danced in so many different places within so many, with so many different kinds of audiences and some sort of nerve-wracking wracking and others are you're just wondering, oh, are we going to do it right? Are we going to make mistakes? Is it going to look good? Are we going to look okay? And this one, um, although we had the nerves, by the time we got out there and we were standing in front of the queen dancing, they all basically went away mm -hmm. because we were dancing for this very focused audience with uh, Emma Lenny sitting there and truly, it felt like Emmalini was watching us. Be and 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 the person who was was um, representing Emmalini this year was just such an incredible human. Um, I hadn't met her before, and when we were just seeing her sitting there, making eye contact with her um, while we were dancing, and it just you could feel the aloha from her. Oh, it was just coming yeah. gorgeous. I and just that's why it was so nerves. easy to dance. Yeah. Any of the nerves went away. <laughs> it wasn't even. It wasn't any. There wasn't. There was nothing mm -hmm. um, that could stop us from doing just a really. Um, great presentation just because it was, um, yeah, it was really coming from our hearts, I think, and going to this special person. So. In the old days, I wouldn't be able to walk in her shadow, and, and you know, all the kapu system that this regal woman, mm -hmm. she was regal, but she was also rugged. There were couples that she broke, and they were told, no, you know, protocol is you cannot touch the queen, and they they refused, they said, no, we're going to ho'okupu her, we're going to mahalo her. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to aloha her. Mm -hmm. And so when the, when the queen learned that this was the way they felt, you know, very um, adamant about being able to aloha her, she says, okay, we're going we're gonna to tax oh, that one. You know, we're going we're gonna to let the people come. We feel a closest and affinity to Queen Emma. And of course, Queen Emma is my favorite Ali. And I know a lot of dances um, for Queen Emma that have been passed on through, um, through to us, actually. And um, most of the dances we perform today um, come from the repertoire of Joseph Inala Ole, who was one of the late great Kumuholas. And it's a privilege and an honor, and also a great responsibility at the same time to carry on these dances, because if we don't dance the dances, then the dances don't get done, our Ali'i don't live. By doing all of the dances that we do, we are able to bring our Ali'i back to life again. So... There was a lot of tragedy in her life, we know that. Mm -hmm. And the death of her boy, the death of her husband, mm -hmm. and the loss to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Here's the heir, one of the heirs to the throne. Mm -hmm. And that was so precious, mm -hmm. right? Only child, too. Right. Right. Only, Only child. child. Right. It's so precious. And I, you know, I believe that that must have been one of the reasons that she would come up to Koke. She, she was... Um, like many of us who come up here in search of the strength of the aina, mm. and the healing, the healing, the healing power, and the healing strength of the aina and her culture. They've been, you know, they're all just drenched. Yeah, drenched, and, and they were huddled together, huddled together, and they were trying to stay warm, and and they couldn't. Right, it was impossibility. Mm -hmm. So um, they were moved by her uh, chanting. She chanted familiar kawaii chants. And that really warmed their spirits and kept them through the night so no one could sleep, according to Dr. George Cunningham mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm. his book. He says they were so cold and wet, no one slept, although they tried to keep warm. Oh, yeah. And then she chanted to them. Fire, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's what I look forward to doing. She, she was aware of the needs of her people. And I'm not talking about Hawaiian people, just Hawaii. Mm -hmm. she, she recognized the needs of her people, and then she was, uh, she satisfied them. You know, stop, feed my people, let my people rest. And then she would cuddle them by chanting to them, singing to them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just to mahalo them. Here she was, 
this very politically uh, strong figure in, in, in Hawaii, the territory of Hawaii. And when she goes on these uh, adventures that she says, I want to go here, she has the power to you know, say, did she take her political comrades? Did she take the governor or the, you know, the, the uh, mayor? The guys, yeah. did, they take, did she take the educators with her? No, because she was a very political woman. She was very political and, and she was also a very Christian woman. But she also, this is why I like her, another really strong quality, I think, that can help us today as young Hawaiian women, as young women, period, mm -hmm. as we can, we can look at her and what we can learn from her. She took her Christianity, but she also respected her, her roots, her culture. So when she went up into her retreat, to her adventure, she, did she take this? No. Did she take her ministers? No. She respected her Hawaiian culture, loved her Hawaiian culture. She took her kumus and her hula sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think for her, just the connection with people connection with her people with who she felt so were so threatened in so many ways not just physically but just culturally and linguistically and all that and to to be to come to Koke'e and to be with the people the way she was to just come to Kauai even and all the many things she did on this island um, yeah. just endeared her so much to to them. She came to the mountain as many of us do today even to draw her strength for, and to, to rejuvenate herself and to fill herself fill herself with the uh, appreciation for God and beauty and hula, friendship, you know. And uh, I respect that in the woman in the 1800s. I think women today are, uh, are so much like Emma in a lot of big and small ways. I mean, we were just talking last evening in the cottage with the women here and the things that we've all overcome as single parents, you know, as uh, surviving spouses, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. teachers, raising children. raising children, just being a woman today. And um, there are super stories, super moms, super women everywhere today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, There's so many. So you see but more during spare. her time, right. during her time, I mean, that's why she would have been perfect today. I mean, she is the woman of today. <laughs> But this is in 1871. Right. The forest is fragrant with the breath of the lehua. And we bring the fragrance of the hala from the big island. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a sight that we have long looked forward to, to be with friends. It touches our hearts. It makes us more aware of how precious friendship is. If we, as a people, don't know our foundation, then we have no foundation. So it's important for everyone to know the history, the um, philosophy, the thoughts that went into all things that have formed our history that's here today. And hopefully it takes us to a better place tomorrow. Much of us today never lived under the monarchy. So we don't have this closeness, but through the hula, we are able to bring ourselves closer to the Ali and to bring them alive again, make them alive in our hearts. And for the last three days, my students and I have been together on this island for the first time. And it, it's been magical. And thank Kauai for that. Thank you. I think we need to learn from, from what she did. We need to learn as modern Hawaiians that although we need to love and respect our past, we need to live in the present. Mm -hmm. That's what one of the big messages that I get from Emma. She was from the past, but she lived in the present. And she contributed to go into the future with that attitude of, with courage, with arrogance even, with arrogance. <laughs> Paki Ki, the, the governor called her. <laughs> She's Paki Ki about this track. She so won't listen to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's stubborn. <laughs> and, um, and I think we need to be that way in, in, our, in our history today mm -hmm. as we're moving into the future as Hawaiians. Not to live in the past or the pain or the suffering of the past, which she could have done as a woman living in the morning or through the morning of her loss. Right. She could have done that, but she didn't. And, 
And I think that her example, as she lifted her spirit, as she drew on the natural healing powers of our land to fill herself. I think the lesson of hope, because in spite of her uh, adversities, she still held the faith and she still held aloha and she still exhibited hope in, uh, in the goodness of people and the goodness of the spirit and the benevolence of it. So, you know, to be here with mom yeah. and me and Nana yeah. um, has been so special. And then to see the hula, which is really my first love, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so beautifully, you know, performed for the queen was, uh, made me feel so good, so good, because that culture, you know, our culture comes through the hula and the music. And so anyway, oh, <laughs> thank you all so much. It's been more than I could have hoped for. I will express myself <laughs> the way I do best. <laughs> I didn't think I would get, you know, I don't like to get choked up about stuff. But I'll tell you, when the very end when we're standing there and we all were standing in line um, as she was riding off on her horse and, you know, I thought she was just going to kind of take off and we'd do this sort of this wave and she came back and, you know, just basically said thank you to everyone who had come. just touched everyone standing in the lines and I just I couldn't hold it then it was it was like a bringing back something that that um, that I didn't think was that you could bring back the feelings yeah. um, of a really incredible time it yeah it was like be just standing in someone else's shoes mm -hmm. and knowing it though it was still you and you were yeah. so fortunate to have that experience it was yeah take us back a hundred couple of years and <laughs> yeah feel what it felt like exactly, that's what it was yeah, yeah. We're very fortunate. I think I feel so honored to be here with you, great. Um, to be in your presence is so special. And I'm so proud of you. You are so beautiful. <laughs> You're such a queen to me every day. <laughs> when I first started, I called on Emma 
when I first got the, the call. I called on her, I prayed to her, I said, please. Kumu, Kupuna, help me to surrender to the spirit mm -hmm. of who you are. And everything fell into place. It was so wonderful for me to watch it, just to step aside and let spirit flow through this event. And I'm so grateful for the hard work that you put in because I know how much sacrifice that you've made to perform yesterday. The hula is such a rich foundation. I mean, we're so fortunate to have, I mean, there's no other culture in the world other than our Polynesian people that have the love and the respect and the honor that we pay to our Almakua, to our ancestors through this oral tradition. And it's alive in us today. I know hundreds of years ago, they were looking down at us and they're so proud that they, their, their lives and their deeds and uh, their experiences are being felt in our hearts this morning and that we're sharing it with our tears of aloha. Mm -hmm. So mahalo for such a wonderful lifetime experience. Rowan, Emma, <laughs> my ohana for the week of the We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Oh my gosh, that was awesome.